speaking portion of tonight's gathering, Board of Education, Scranton School District, the November 9th, 2015 November meeting. I'd like to, uh, to call everyone's attention that uh, Director Sheridan and Director Juan, due to uh, injuries, may have to stand during the course of the meeting, and it's not meant it's not meant to be anything else but to relieve some discomfort uh, and, and not to be interpreted in any other way. Uh, the uh, coming out of executive session, uh, we have. Mr. Chris Hughes of West Granton as our first speaker. Chris, would you like to come to the uh, microphone? Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. I'm, I'm, I can't say I'm glad to be back, but I was glad to find the seat this month. Um, my name is Chris Hughes. I have two kids in the district. Uh, one is a first grader at uh, Francis Willard, and the other is a sixth grade student at West Grand Rapids. I've been here for the last two months uh, looking for some resolution for a crossing guard situation at uh, Main Avenue on Reserve Street. Understanding the board had obviously a bigger fish to fry during those two months. So congratulations on overcoming that hurdle. I don't envy any of you for having been up here. Um, there still has been no crossing guard present for uh, intermediate school students who are leaving their homes later than their younger brothers and sisters or their older brothers and sisters who are in high school. Um, and kind of what I had feared might happen in West Scranton happened in South Scranton earlier this uh, month when one of the South Scranton intermediate students, a 14-year-old girl, was hit by a drunk driver in the middle of the day. Um, it's a very unfortunate situation. I wouldn't wish that on any family, which is why I've, I've tried to be present every month. Uh, and from my understanding, that student in that situation actually did have a crossing guard. So there, you know, there was some kind of protection there and, and still, uh, you know, something that you, you hope would never happen to one of your students did happen. Uh, I was also reminded uh, earlier this year of a, a mother of several students in the Scranton School District who was killed by a driver crossing the street, uh, granted at night, but on Main Avenue right near uh, Gary Supermarket. Uh, so, you know, Scranton, the school district has seen its share of families who've been impacted by errant drivers. Uh, so I'm going to... I don't want to be here every month, but until we can figure something out, I'm going to be here every month to say the students at West Scranton uh, Intermediate School deserve a crossing guard uh, later in the morning and later in the afternoon to make sure they can get across the street. I know just last week, my daughter had to call my wife from Main Avenue at Luzerne Street and say, Mom, can you help us come across the street? They were stuck. Uh, despite the fact that we call it a stoplight, there's really no stop there. There's a left-hand turn onto Main Avenue. If you're coming up Luzerne Street from Meridian, uh, and there's left-hand turn signals at Main Avenue both ways. So it's it's incredibly hard for those kids to get across the street. So I'm just going to, uh, again, I'll continue to be here as long as I have to, hopefully not too much longer, but please uh, make that security issue a, a, an important priority. Chris, and, and believe me, I, we really do appreciate your coming back. We really do. Uh, um, and it's to our great disappointment that we have not been able to secure someone to do it at that time. Now, we, in, in our most recent discussions, and, and Director Casey has, um, um, and, 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 and Bob, if you want to share that, that idea with, with Chris, we've, we've come up with a number, of, a number of zones, and that's one of them. And we just discussed this actually 10 minutes ago, the Luzerne and Main Avenue. That's great. Basically, what I asked in executive session, uh, whatever the board felt best, was either to write a letter to city council or to go to city council myself on Thursday night to request the same type of pedestrian crossing signs that they have for our non-district students and our college students, like at Scranton Prep and on Mulberry Street. Well, let's put them at our most dangerous, let's begin targeting our most dangerous intersections. And then at Maple and Pittston, uh, Let's try to send some cops up there to start ticketing people that park too close to the intersection because that's what caused the situation uh, so that this doesn't happen again. I mean, I, I feel terrible that 
this even happened in the first place, but now we, we, we can't be proactive anymore. We have to be reactive. So, I mean, that's that's the position we're at now. So going forward tonight, I haven't gotten a chance to speak to Jeff on this yet, uh, but or Kathy. Um, so that, that that's my idea and that's my wish to start petitioning so that us and City Hall, that we start working together to not only uh, support our University of Scranton students and our Scranton prep students in the in the city, but uh, but our district students as well. I know uh, in the past when Francis Willard has been without a crossing guard, it's a Einan Street at Main Avenue. I know there uh, in the past years there has been a city cop that's been present, so I didn't know if there was any collaboration the board could seek with the Scranton Police Department. Uh, you know, I know they, they also have you know other jobs to do, but you know safety and security is one of those services that we look to for. So and, and, and that intersection at, at Garrity's to me is as dangerous as the one at Luzerne Street. It's yeah, really it was a nightmare. It, it really it's it's so heavily traveled and it's fast. It's okay. fast. Uh, Dr. Kirian has has yeah. just informed me. Hey, please, yeah. um, Chris, we've been working with uh, Chief Graziano That's great. Um, to get a guard there, and what we understand is I believe it's 8:20 in the morning now. Okay. Okay. See, that's something I wasn't aware of, so thank you for that. Okay. Okay. Uh, I mean, we're right, we're a block off of Main Avenue. So my daughter, you know, we've got a time where, you know, she can eat her breakfast at a comfortable rate and, you know, meet her friends. So she, she walks in a group, so there's safety in numbers. And, you know, she lives about 828, 25, and by the time she hits the corner, there's not That's a right. guard there. Mm -hmm. yeah. So that there's, there is a gap. So for yeah. the students who live close, we need to they're going to leave the house a little later. So there's, there's a little bit of wiggle room I think we she'll, need to meet. She'll get Until yeah, 10 to 9. Wow, okay. Yeah. Right, the, the problem isn't with uh, our elementary and high school students because they obviously start earlier than our middle school students. So that's that's where the gap is. So um, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to continue to keep an eye on it. I'm going to ask my wife to. I'm gonna... Okay. Thank you so much. Or you, you might see me next month. Who knows? <laughs> hopefully as as the roads aren't too bad. Well, right now, so. Hopefully it's with, with the smile. Hopefully it'll be with, with right. like good news. So. Okay, great. Excellent. Okay. All right, thank you so much. Thank, thank you, Chris. Thank you, thank you. Thank you very much. Next is, is uh, Mr. Kevin Cades of the Scranton Federation of Teachers. Kevin? Good evening, Director Stafford. Um, uh, President Dwayne, uh, just uh, not in a pestering spirit, but uh, in a spirit of uh, frugality, let's say, um, uh, like to call your attention to something that the SFT was, has brought forward before. The fact that we have uh, currently have 12 grievances that have uh, risen to the board level that have not been heard since uh, I think early <coughs> summer. Some of them, anyway, did back that far. Um, one of them is coming, uh, the, the date has been set for the 10th of uh, December. Um, there's a four week uh, notice that has to be given if it's going to be canceled. If you, know, if you happen to uh, want to hear it at some point, um, it's, that one, for instance, uh, is about an amount of money that's far less than the $2,500 um, uh, fee that the the district will have to pay for each of these uh, 12 grievances. So um, in the spirit of saying, saving a whole bunch of taxpayer dollars, we would encourage the board to uh, to hear these grievances. Uh, many of them probably would only take five minutes. Uh, some might take a little longer. You need to check into the records uh, you know, at the administration building, et cetera. But we would encourage you to do that. Thank Kevin, you. I, I think I spoke to you when I, yeah. I did speak to Mr. Fullen, and uh, I, I, I am going to stop by tomorrow specifically on that one grievance, but on all of them to try to, uh, to see which ones we can resolve and which ones we can hear at the board level to avoid the cost for both parties, because it is cost for both parties. Yeah, okay, thanks. Well, thank you. Thank you, Kevin. Thanks, Kevin. And now
now that the uh, community portion of the community input portion of the meeting is uh, is over, we'll, we'll now have a roll call. Mrs. Orr. Mr. Casey. Present. Mr. Dunningham. Present. Mr. Duffy. Present. Mr. Martinelli. Here. Mr. McCander. Present. Mrs. Oleski. Present. Dr. Irwan. Here. Mr. Sheridan. Here. Mr. Dwyhe. Present. Night. Present. Thank you, Mrs. Orr. You're welcome. Um, um, I, I'll just take a, a few minutes to comment on, on something that, that, that Chris had just spoken of. Um, uh, one of our students at South Intermediate School on, uh, I believe, the Friday the 31st, or uh, the 30th, excuse me, on Friday the 30th of October, uh, um, Quayangela Richardson was was involved in a, an automobile accident uh, as, a, as a pedestrian in um, um, just one of these things that that, that we that we in an urban district uh, are always concerned about and, and of course we're, we're dealing with it uh, specifically this evening but um, the board and our administration would like to cite some individuals who we believe uh, are exceptional. Uh, Mrs. Oleski and Dr. Kirian and I discussed this uh, over the last four or five days, and uh, it's been brought to my attention, and the details of the incident are uh, no, not only remarkable, but they're inspiring and gratifying. Uh, and at this time, I would like to turn the microphone over to Mrs. Oleski. She has a few things she'd like to say. Thank you. <laughs> the golden rule has always been to us as do unto others as others would do unto you. However, the golden rule always is in practice when a crisis occurs. Some people who were faced with a crisis situation would have driven by and left this for someone else. Well, this is not what happened 11 days ago when one of our students was struck by a driver on a hit and run accident and left unconscious in the middle of Pittston Avenue. Julie Maloney, a math teacher at South Grand Intermediate School, Lisa Regan, a school nurse at West Grand High School, Melissa McTiernan and Michael Coleman, our administrators at South Grand Intermediate School, did exactly what you would have hoped that they would do. They came to the aid of Quad Angelina Richardson and her siblings without thought. <clears throat> this is who they are and who we were both grateful for them. We are both great. We are all grateful for them, and very proud of them. They put the children first and did the right thing. On behalf of the Scran School District Board of Directors and Administration, I would like to thank you for being the the best modern example of a good Samaritan. Thank you. Please come forward.
remarks from the superintendent. Uh, to our teachers and administrators who were recognized uh, just a moment ago, I too want to thank you for your selfless service. And in this month of special thanks to all of our employees, thank you for what you do every day for our students. Also, as Veterans Day approaches, we extend our gratitude to all of our employees and community members who have served or who have family who have served in the armed forces. Thank you for your service. Today marks the ninth school week and our students are enjoying fall athletics, fine arts, and academic programs. In fact, the night players will present The Miracle Worker by William Gibson on December 4th and 5th at 7 p.m. and December 6th at 2 p.m. and that is why you see the stage uh, behind me as it is. Also, congratulations to all of our athletes who participated in fall programs. The Bell Game has been rescheduled for Friday evening, November 13, 2015 at 7 p.m. The game, a Scranton School District tradition, is played between Scranton and West Scranton High Schools. There is much excitement and anticipation around which of our super teams will bring home the coveted bell. We expect that our bands and cheerleaders will do their best to generate excitement and student support at the pep rallies leading up to this fantastic game. Good luck to the coaches and team members of both Scranton School District teams. The operations team continues to support our schools in ensuring that our buildings and grounds are safe. The Scranton Police Department has been conducting safety assessments of all of our buildings. These assessments are ongoing and will take a year to complete. As each school's assessment is completed, Mr. Jeffrey Brazil and the operations team are making suggested improvements and working with principals to update safety plans. The Pennsylvania Department of Education today sent notification that for the 2014-15 school year, the district is in complete compliance with current statute, regulations, and guidance of all of our title programs as determined by the Federal Programs Consolidated Review. Congratulations to Mr. Sunday and his team for ensuring that the district meets the department standards. On an academic note, the state performance profile scores have been released for our two high schools. Our curriculum and instruction team under the leadership of Mr. John Marichek and Ms. Erin Keating have begun to work with our principals to analyze the data and determine the appropriate strategies for improvement. And it's full steam ahead with the rollout of the district's first ever steam mobile to inspire creativity and critical thinking in our elementary students. As a foundation for our steam education program, the district, under the leadership of Mr. Joseph Brazil and his team, have introduced the steam mobile. The steam mobile is a mobile classroom that will visit our elementary schools to offer project-based hands-on learning in science, technology, engineering, art, and mathematics for our third, fourth, and fifth grade students. Students will come out to the mobile unit during regular class periods and work on the projects. We will use this project as a launch pad to expand STEAM education across the district. Thank you to Mr. Brazil and his team for making a dream become a reality. At this time, I'd like to ask Mr. Brazil to come forward to explain how the STEAM mobile was put together and to introduce the STEAM team. Mr. Dwight, that concludes my remarks as I ask Mr. Brazil to come forward. Thank you, Dr. Curie. Uh, it, it was a concept that began about three years ago, uh, and the old saying, necessity being the mother of invention, uh, obviously funds have been tight. So what we did was we, we cannibalized some equipment that we had in our schools uh, and utilized 
utilize them in the um, this, uh, this vehicle. Uh, to be honest, my part was easy. Uh, you know, I, I had this idea, and I don't know where it came from. Maybe I saw it somewhere else. Uh, the hard part really came in putting together uh, all the lesson plans, which our teachers did. Um, we have three teachers. Two of them had to leave. They have uh, they actually teach after school. Christina Carafa and Katana Miller uh, were uh, very instrumental in coming up with all the lesson plans. The beauty of the lesson plans are is that they're all containerized. So in other words, when the weather's not nice and the kids can't come out to the vehicle, the lesson plan, all the lesson plans and the equipment can go into them. Currently, we have three lesson plans for each grade level, grade three, four, and five. Uh, we don't have any school with more than six sections of any grade level. So basically what that means is we'll be able to handle two schools per day. Uh, but I do want to thank also uh, the work that was done on this in our department. It was a department effort. It wasn't, it wasn't just my effort. It was a department effort. Billy Dupree, the man, you know, I, I, I can't say enough about the people in the department. Bill Dupree, Jim Hanlon, Billy Casulis, Jason Pika, Phil Danino, and Ron O'Barrett. They worked tirelessly on this, long hours without pay uh, to bring this to fruition. And also the maintenance department. Joe Regan, our carpenter, he, he could have his own uh, TV show. He is so he is so talented at making things work. Uh, and our two electricians, Rob Kerrigan and Bill Stetzer, they really they really put their heart and soul into this. And I and I'd be remiss if I didn't thank Mr. Sunday and actually the board for supporting this. Uh, you know. Greg would find a way to loosen up a few dollars that we did need so we can bring this forward. So I'd like to thank all of them. Now the hard part is Mrs. Keating has to schedule this, has to make, we're gonna make it work. Um, you know, we, we do have a plan for it, uh, but going forward, I think the demand is gonna be so great. Uh, I'm already being asked if we can do this for the middle or the high school. Uh, for people who've gone through it, for students who've gone through it. It was a huge success on Friday night, uh, much, much bigger than I, than I had anticipated. So, uh, again, it, this was a district-wide effort. Every department was involved at one point. Uh, and it, and it, was, it was three years in the making, so I'd like to thank everyone who was involved. Side note, um, Mr. Brazil, fire up the engines. Uh, I've been contacted by the superintendents in the area. We are meeting on Friday, and they asked if it would be possible for them to tour our uh, steam mobile. So I graciously accept it. <laughs> Thanks, Joe. Uh, moving forward, I will entertain a motion to approve the consent agenda. I'd like to make a motion to approve the consent agenda. Second. Second. Having been seconded, on question. Mrs. Orr? Mr. Casey? Yes. Mr. Dunahill? Yes. Mr. Duffy? Yes. Mr. Martinelli? Yes. Mr. McAndrew? Yes. Mrs. Zaleski? Yes. Dr. Irwan? Yes. Mr. Sheridan? Yes. Mr. Dwighy? Yes. Nine affirmative. A resolution uh, under I-1, personnel. I-1. Wait a minute. Okay, yep. Did you find it? I got it. I think it is. Hiring processes of the paraprofessionals. A, the position is posted. B, internal employees receive first fitting rights. C, applicants are screened to ensure minimal qualifications are met. D, remaining qualifications, applications receive interviews. Applicants will be scored and the names will be submitted to the board. E, 
walk-in applicants prior to posting in a specific school year will not be considered without a letter of interest pertaining to the current posting. Interviews will be held prior, <coughs> excuse me, prior to the start of the school year and updated for the new applications approximately prior to the start of the second semester. Applications on file cannot be more than two years old. F, based on the list submitted, the board will approve the candidates for the open positions or the remaining from the hiring cycle. So submitted. Second. Have we been seconded? Yes. On the question. On the question, um, I'll be voting no against this just because I believe that all paraprofessional and professional employees should be hired by professionals and professionals only. Um, I, I would like to see it be the paraprofessional hiring process be the same as the teacher hiring process. Thank you. To answer that a little bit is the, the application, the process is going to go through um, a procedure, not only through the personnel, but the superintendent's office for reviewing and for, for uh, interviews and uh, going through a process and then the list will be, remain the list, the list will be sent down to the board for final approval. Yeah, I, I agree. Uh, the, the interview panel is our administration and uh, the staff and personnel. It's, it's, it's not the board. I mean, Anyone will, who they be, will, will they be hired in the order in which they are ranked? It, it, absolutely. Okay. On the question, Mrs. Orr. Mr. Duffy. Yes. Mr. Martinelli. Yes. Mr. McAndrew. Yes. Mrs. Oleski. Yes. Dr. Ruan. Yes. Mr. Sheridan. Yes. Mr. Casey. Yes. Mr. Dunningham. No. Mr. Dwighi. Yes. Eight affirmative, one negative. Motion passes. Resolution J1, personnel reports. J1 meeting date November 9, 2015, category personnel um, prepared by William Gaynard, Chief Human Resources Officer, uh, permanent long term positions, assignments, coaching appointments, certified resignations, non certified appointments, leave of absence, non certified resignations. So, so list per attached. So submit it. Having been seconded on the question. Hearing none, this is Orr. Mr. Martinelli? Yes. Mr. McAndrew? Yes. Mrs. Oleski? Yes. Dr. Ruan? Yes. Mr. Sheridan? Mr. Sheridan? Mr. Sheridan? Yes, I'm sorry. Uh, Mr. Casey? Yes. Mr. Dunahue? Yes. Mr. Duffy? Yes. Mr. Dwighi? Yes. Nine affirmative. Item J12, meeting November 9, 2015, personnel. Increase needed for compensated for the medical training employment market. So for attached. Second. Having been seconded on the question. President, there's a second page. You want me to read that on? Yeah, I think so, yeah. Yes, please do. Know, so. Please do. The personnel committee presents the following resolution for your consideration. Be it resolved that to do the highly competitive nature for finding substitute employees with the licensed practical nurse designation, the district does hereby increase it daily substitute rate for LPNs from $50.75 to $90 per day. All other terms of the employment shall remain the same. Respectfully submitted. Seconded. Having been seconded on the question. Hearing none, Mrs. Orr. Mr. McAndrew? Yes. Mrs. Oleski? Yes. Dr. Irwan? Yes. Mr. Sheridan? Yes. Mr. Casey? Yes. Mr. Dunningham? Yes. Mr. Duffy? Yes. Mr. Martinelli? Yes. Mr. Dwighi? Yes. Nine affirmative. J3, personnel, 
the personnel committee presents the following resolution for your consideration. Be it resolved that the board of directors does hereby approve the request for the organizational leave of absence without pay for the year 2015-2016 school year for Rosemary Bullen. Terms and conditions as set forth in the district district policy number 439 regarding uncompensated leave shall apply. Respectfully submit it. Second. Having been seconded on a question. Hearing none, Mrs. Orr. Mrs. Oleski? Yes. Dr. Verwan? Yes. Mr. Sheridan? Yes. Mr. Casey? Yes. Mr. Donahue? Yes. Mr. Duffy? Yes. Mr. Martinelli? Yes. Mr. McAndrew? Yes. Mr. Dwight? Yes. Nine affirmative. Agenda J4, personnel, permissions, and to attend meetings and conferences. So for attached, respectfully submit it. Second. Have you been seconded on the question? Hearing none, Mrs. Orr. Dr. Verwan? Yes. Mr. Sheridan? Yes. Mr. Casey? Yes. Mr. Dunhill? Yes. Mr. Duffy? Yes. Mr. Martinelli? Yes. Mr. McAndrew? Yes. Mrs. Oleski? Yes. Mr. Dwight? Yes. Nine affirmative. Now we've added a resolution for the meeting J5 on the contract contracting of services with Kelly services for day-to-day -day substitutes. Does that have to be We're good? We got it. Mr. Sheridan? Yep. J5, the members of the Board of School Directors of the City of Scranton, it is the recommendation of the Personnel Committee that the following be approved. Whereas the Scranton School Board of Directors would like to enter into an agreement with Kelly Educational Staffing in Scranton for the day-to-day -day substitute teachers and whereas the Kelly Educational Staffing is the largest employee and substitute teachers nationwide placing qualified substitute teachers in 2.2 million classrooms last year and currently services over 6,175 schools across 35 states with 100% successful improving substitute placement rates in the partner districts and whereas Kelly Educational Staffing will assume the responsibilities of assigning day-to-day -day hiring of substitute teachers and therefore may be resolved that the Scranton School Board of Directors approves approves the solicitor to review the agreement and the superintendent and her designee to consummate the matter. Respectfully submit it. Having been seconded, on the question. Hearing none, Mrs. Orr. Mr. Sheridan? Yes. Mr. Casey? Yes. Mr. Donahue? Yes. Mr. Duffy? Yes. Mr. Martinelli? Yes. Mrs. Mr. McAndrew? Yes. Mrs. Oleski? Yes. Dr. Ruan? Yes. Mr. Dwight? Yes. Nine affirmative. That's all on the personnel, Mr. President. And I believe that's, that's all of our resolutions for this evening. Now, reporting out of committees. Uh, under athletics and stadium, Mr. Casey? Uh, nothing to report at this time. Under budget and finance, Mr. Uh, Donahue? The only thing I have at this time is just a suggestion that uh, we reach out to the new board members who are going to be taking office in December to give them a update overview of our budget situation. Um, just because I remember when I first got on this board that just having a little over three weeks to wrap my head around it and then have to vote on a budget was a little overwhelming. So to ease that burden a little bit, um, I would just request that we reach out to them just to give them an update. Point and a well briefing taken. on what? Point well taken. I'm, I'm going to ask uh, Dr. Kerrion and, and, and uh, Mr. Sunday to arrange for an informational session for our new directors, uh, Mr. Lesh, Mr. Schuster, and Mr. Timlin, uh, coming into the process. Uh, it, it, it should make things better. It should facilitate their, their uh, adjustment and hopefully help with the budget process in December. Uh, under technology, Mrs. Oleski. I have nothing more on technology. Under education, Mr. Martinelli. Nothing, sir. Food services, Dr. Rowan. Health and safety, Mr. Duffy. Nothing at this time. Intergovern intergovernmental, Mr. McCandrew. Nothing at this time. 
the uh, uh, labor relations, Dr. Rowan? Nothing at this time. Policy and legislative and federal programs? Mr. Martinelli? Nothing. Under personnel, Mr. Sheridan, anything more? Nothing, Mr. President. <laughs> Public relations, Mr. Donahue? Nothing at this time. Under purchasing, Mr. Duffy? Nothing at this time. Building and grounds, Mr. Sheridan? Nothing at this time, Mr. President. Special education, Mrs. Oleski? Nothing at this time. Vocational education, Mr. McAndrew? Nothing at this time. And transportation, Mr. Casey? Nothing at this time. Before I, I proceed any further, uh, I would like to ask Solicitor for a report out of executive session tonight. Discussions involving real estate, personnel litigation, settlements, and student discipline matters and labor relations were discussed this evening. Thank you, Attorney Menora. You are. Uh, 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 under new business, there's just a few things I'd like to comment on that the Lincoln Jackson Academy will be um, uh, hosting its second annual Veterans Day brunch for uh, all veterans uh, of, of all branches of the service in, in, in any conflict. Uh, and they are they are guests free. Uh, everyone else, there's a, there's a modest charge. It's a, it's a great event over at what was the St. Mary School in, in Southside. Uh, and the, the students cook and serve. And that will be on Veterans Day from uh, 9 until noon. And uh, also, I would like to Someone that Mr. Brazil uh, uh, reminded me that, we, that he had overlooked and he didn't want to. We wanted to, to give a special thanks to Ryan Nat, uh, one of our instructors, uh, one of our art teachers in the district, who was responsible for so much of the great painting on the steam mobile. It's really terrific, Ryan. Thank you. I think we had to give him a hand, guys. Really. And, and, uh, on, uh, on the consent agenda tonight, we, we accepted some resignations, and one was our, our special education director, uh, Mrs. Gina Calarasi, and, and I, I'd like to speak on behalf of the board as well as personally. We'd all like to wish her well. She's moving on with the Department of Education, and uh, we, we are certain that she'll be a success there, and uh, we wish her the best. And um, does anyone else have something under new business? Mr. President, can I just say one thing? Yes, Mr. Sunday. I, I don't mean to belabor the point, but uh, under Dr. Kerrigan's presentation, she talked about the compliance for our federal programs, uh, and, and she thanked uh, me for doing that, but I, I would be remiss. I, I think that we, we, I'd like to make sure that the board was fully aware that Ann Salerno is the, has been the program administrator, and she, she has overseen that program uh, you know, since she's been here in the past number of years. So I, I would think that, you know, Ann and, and Pat Laffey, who uh, assumed the responsibility of doing all the accounting for all the federal programs uh, to make sure that, that they're in compliance. So I, I think those two deserve more of the uh, kudos than, than I do, and I just want the record to reflect that. Thank you. Thank you, Greg. Anyone else under new business? I, could, I would just like to say, I, I know it's three of our board members last evening, and I'd like to say thank you for all the hard work and all you've done. I've learned a lot from all of you, and you're going to be missed. And thank you. Thank you. And I echo that sentiment. Mr. Donahue, Mr. Martinelli, and Dr. Rowan. I'll entertain a motion for adjournment. I'd like to make a motion to adjourn. Second. Second. Having been seconded, meeting adjourned.